Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. You can visit my website, thebiodude.com. Come here to my showroom at The Bio Dude Houston, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4. And of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Instagram or Facebook. And in front of me, I have a lot of cool stuff. And I'm so lucky that I've been looking to do an African fat tail how-to video for so long. And Heather graciously emailed us for the dude to, to give her little Nymphadora African fat tail gecko a complete upgrade bioactive setup. So you can see right now, this is Nymphadora's current enclosure. It's been cleaned up a little bit. So this side for Nymphadora, we're using as her humid side. So what Heather has been doing is putting a little bit of, of moss and uh, coconut fiber here on this side and using this as the dry side with an under tank heater on this side with a course of water dish. And what we are going to be doing today is giving little Nymphadora a great upgrade that is a fully natural, self-cleaning, self-maintaining, bioactive, bio-dude terrarium. I'm so excited. So I first want to show you guys about, about fat tail geckos. So this is not your normal fat tail. This is actually an, um, an albino, and it does have the special gene for the white stripe. So sometimes you can find ones directly imported out of Africa that are the two shades of brown, the white bellies, yellow bellies with the, with the stripe, um, whereas there's other ones that don't have it. You can see here that they are eyelidded geckos, exactly like leopard geckos. Um, and they have, instead of having the, the lamella, on their feet, they have the adorable little toenails. And when you're dealing with geckos with toenails, you need to make sure that your husbandry is on point because if they don't have proper sheds, uh, shed can get stuck to their toes, uh, cause excessive constriction, causes their toes to fall off, similar to how farmers used to neuter dogs and cows back in the 1800s. And he and and you know we're, we're we're getting a little taste. Something new, unique about these guys is the, also of their tail. You can see here that their tail is long and segmented, and what they can do as a defense mechanism is drop their tail if they feel threatened. And fat tails will grow it back. Uh, they they grow it back in more of a leathery single piece instead of the segments. Now these guys are crispicular, just like leopard geckos, which means that they are most active during the day and during the nighttime. So with that, we are going to be pro providing full spectrum lighting, as well as giving this little one the, all the abilities to go in and out of burrows, tunnels, and hides that we're going to be making with the terra firma. I'm so excited to let's get building. So what I have here in front of me is a 3618 by 12 Exoterra, which Heather graciously donated here to us at the Bio Dude, and in exchange, the dude's getting her all set up, fully ready to go. Ahead of me, I have the UVB. Uh, this is the Arcadia's brand new uh, Pro T57% Shade Dweller. This is specifically designed for crispicular animals that are active during the day, um, as the sun's going down, and as the sun's coming back up, which is their highest activity levels in the wild. During the day, fat tails, being from Africa, will spend the majority of their time in their burrows or dens, come out when it cools down a little bit to be able to forage for food, find water, go back in to, to get their, you know, their equilibrium, come back out for the sun is highest in the sky. So that's why it's really important that we provide some sort of UVB. Um, I did keep fat tails for many years when I was younger and I always, pro I always provided them the 5% spectrum. There are school, there is a school of thought that it's not necessary for crispicular reptiles to have UVB. And I kind of think of it this way. If you're gonna spend a lot of money on a car and the car tells you that it'll run fine off, fine off normal gasoline, but it's recommended that you get premium. Would you not want to put the premium gas in the car to make it last longer? I consider that to be the same principle when it comes to keeping rep the UVB? Maybe not. But will it benefit them long term to live a happier, healthier life as well as to help you provide a proper photo period for your gecko? Yes. And you all know that's what the bio dude's about providing the best care rather than the basic care. So we have, uh, the, we have the 3618 here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the lid. Now I'm not gonna be covering up the lid whatsoever. This is gonna be a full screen lid for the little fat tail. And the very first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in my terra firma. Now I'm sure you guys are well aware of how my firma works. 
It retains all tunnels and burrows that your lizards and snakes make. It stays dry at the moist and bottom layers um, may, may, while it helps raising your ambient humidity while air flowing from top to bottom appropriately, helping to outcompete aerobic bacteria as well as promote the positive growth of different funguses and bacteria to give you your bioactive terrarium. Now, as far as the other biodegradables I'm going to be mixing in, I'm going to be mixing in sphagnum moss. That's going to be wet but not dripping to help create humid pockets in the soil, A, not only to benefit the gecko, but to B, give humidity pockets. It's really important to give your crispicular reptiles such as leopard geckos and fat tail geckos humidity dens because in the wild, that's what they use for shedding, hydration, and for overall homeostasis. So overall, making sure that their water balance is correct with the proper humidity, you'll get perfect sheds in a really healthy animal. So let's get started here. I'm gonna put my, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dump in the firma. Now this is my 36 And what I'm going to do is I'm going to evenly distribute the substrate all around here. How's the glare? Can you see okay? Okay. So right now we have about a three inch layer of firma in here. And after we add the biodegradables, it's going to give us that nice solid three and a half. I wasn't trying to have the substrate be as deep as I would say for like a ball python because they don't really need that depth. The firma can function appropriately on as little as three inches of substrate. But for super, super, super long term and big, big species, uh, you know, you need to go a little bit deeper. But with the small size of the fat tail and how easy they are to take care of, this will do the trick. Next thing I'm going to do, you see my AAA sphagnum moss. I'm going to take my sphagnum moss. I'm going to open it up. And uh, one of my little trade secrets with the bag, bags hold water. How convenient. And then we're going to... I'm going to take it and I'm going to get it. So as you can see here, it's going to be wet. Not that much dripping a little bit. Okay. Let me do some squeezing. There we go. Perfect. Now, fat tails like it a little bit more humid um, in some parts of, the, parts of the terrarium than like your leopard geckos and other uh, crispicular reptiles like that. So I'm gonna be spreading the spag moss all over. But what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be leaving some spag at the top and I'm gonna, on the other side where the hot side's gonna be, that's where the spag's gonna be more mixed in. So we have a humid side right here that is gonna be have a lot higher humidity in specific portions of the tank to provide those nice ambient humidity spots that they love so much. While on this side, this spag's gonna dry out a lot faster and provide a little bit more fuel for the drier end of the terrarium. So as it breaks down, it pro provides more organic nutrition into your soil. So next, you guys know I'm all about the mixing. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mix in the spag here really well. And you guys can see kind of what it's doing here. And then for this, there we go. You can see how I did that. There's more at the top on this side versus it's mixed in here on this side. After that, we're going to go and add in some leaf litter. Now the leaf litter, you can put in whatever kind you want. Uh, I, I tend to go with like the live oak or maple uh, for your smaller lizards, but you can really use any kind. It doesn't matter. Now everyone tells me, Josh, there really aren't, there's not that many leaves in Africa. Oh, there's some. The biggest thing that you, that you need to remember with the leaf litter the spag moss and the other biodegradables that I offer is let's go back to the car metaphor. Think of the substrate as the car. Think of the biodegradables as the gas. The gas is what's going to drive the car. So as your biodegradables break down, they're going to provide the organic nutrition into your soil, promoting your bioactive environment. There we go. So we got the leaf litter all mixed in there. So I'm liking how this looks. Essentially what's going to happen over time is the, the middle and bottom layers here are always going to be consistently moist, where the top layer is always going to be dry. The next thing that I'm going to figure out is where do I want our hides to be? Fat tail geckos love to have a cool side and love, I'd love to have a hot side. 
So what Heather's gonna be doing is she's gonna be using a nano heat dome on the very top on one side to help raise the temperature of the terrarium. And after I'm done building, I'll go over all the heating elements with you that you can use in a cage like this. So after we get all the substrate biodegradables mixed in, next thing I'm gonna add is my BioShot. So this is the standard that comes in all of my bioactive kits. And essentially this is cultured archaea in my Corazol, as well as a natural organic fertilizer that boasts a 4-4-4 NPK ratio. Essentially what that means is this jump starts your plants with organic nutrition right, right away. So that way your plants aren't dealing with as much shock when you plant them, makes your green thumb a little bit bigger. Second thing is that these promote the processes that naturally break down organic matter. Shed skin or shed feces, decaying leaves, decaying spag moss. This incorporates all those necessary drivers to achieve bioactivity. Now, as you guys know, um, I haven't had the bugs on my website for a while. I'm really, really working on getting them updated. And I am going to be adding some bugs here because I always hook up my locals. So I'm going to be adding in springtails, isopods, and earwigs. So you can see here, you can see are tropical pinks. You can see um, some, there's, there's a bunch of isos in here. You can see some powder grays and some giant oranges as well. Now let's slowly, there goes some earwigs. Now earwigs are going to stay at the very bottom and effectively aerate. They are completely harmless to the lizard. The isopods and springtails are also completely harmless. With having the cleanup crews in here, you're gonna be having to replace the biodegradables a little bit more frequently, just because they burn through them a little bit more because it is a, their food source. So, we got the bugs, we got the biodegradables, we got the bio shot, we got the dude substrate. Next step is the best part, and always my favorite, is getting the tank decorated with how I wanna have it set up. So, like I said to you guys earlier, we wanna have a cool side hotspot, and a humid side hotspot. So I designated this end to be the more humid side. So what I'm gonna do is I got, like we do with the ball pythons, I got a cork flat here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna half submerge a cork flat right like this. So that way there's a makeshift den right here to start. Humid den. Now let's go to the hot, let's go to the hotter side of the den right here. Yeah. So it's all about giving your reptiles options. They love options for hydration. They love options for hiding and options for thermoregulating. Those are the three keys of, of husbandry for when, when keeping these animals, reptiles in general. Next I have cork bark tubes. So the cork bark tubes I got as a, as a way to A, not only give him a third and fourth way to hide, but also something to climb on in the event that we want to bask for a little bit. A lot of people tell me, Josh, these animals don't, these animals don't bask. They don't do stuff like that. You know, I put my leopard gecko on um, in that exoterra, which you guys saw me set up with that piece of ghost wood that went up to the nano. I should have got pictures because I've seen him basking before. Where it may not be that identified in the wild that they don't or, or that they do, excuse me, it doesn't mean that they won't take up the opportunity if given. So I'm going to put this. Yeah, I like that. Heather, what do you think of that? Are you okay with that? Okay. I thought I broke my tank. Boss man, I almost had a bad day. Okay. Now, the, what's nice about the cork bark as well is it'll be it'll create microbial hot zones essentially so the microfauna are pretty much going to swarm this and essentially try to try to take over let me make sure okay so we have lots of easy access to get up here so we know that fat tails might not be the most agile of climbers so we want to make it as easy as possible for them to be able to get in here and you know get up to the top next are plants so i got a couple here so a first I'm gonna move this and I'm gonna put the water dish right here in the corner. I always forget to put the water dish in and that should be one of the first things we put in. Always gotta make room for the water, okay. Yeah. 
And I'm also going to put a piece of cork like this in the water dish. Hey, here's another secret, guys. If you ever get irritated with dubias or crickets drowning in your water bowl, take a small piece of cork, it'll float right in the water bowl. So if they get in there, it gives them a way to climb out and hop over. So, okay. So we have a Dracania compacta. I have a bird's nest fern, lemon button fern, and a Neanderbella palm. Now I went with a lot of ferns because the ferns, they can handle the humidity ranges as well as the consistent temperature fluctuations from the hot end to the cool end. So the, the Dracania being as tall as it is, I'm gonna put this right back here. Okay, the Neanderbella palm. Now these guys need a little bit more substrate because their root systems can be more complex. I'm gonna put that right here. Honest opinion, guys, what do you think? Do you want me to move anything? So we have a nice big open area here. So if you want to put a feeding dish right here in the middle, your little one can literally crawl out of any hide that we have to do what to do our bidding, I guess. Water dish is easily acceptable, accessible, and we have pretty hardy plants that even if we get stepped on, we'll be okay. So I like how this looks nice, open, and simple. So what I'm gonna do is next I'm gonna make sure that we have so we have hot hot side, cool side, two more different hides. Okay. Next, I want to show you guys is the type of lighting and heating and other things that we want to use with the fat tails. I'm actually going to leave this open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the screen lid back on here. And then I'm going to take my Grow and Glow LED that is included with every species specific bioactive kit. I'm going to take it out of the box. So this is my 22 inch version. So my 22 inch is my largest one. It, it, it um, um, emits 7,000 Kelvin at 2,200 lumens and comes with a one year warranty. So you can see I have my adapter plugged in and I have it set to the on position. After the adapter is plugged in and set to the on position, I am then going to take my 22. I'm going to set it up horizontally like this and I'm going to slowly turn. And I'm sorry if I blind you guys. The moment it turns on, I'm so sorry, we stop turning and I'm just gonna put it on right like that. Next thing that we have, these are not included in the bioactive kits like the springtails and isopods, but uh, I do sell them as an add-on. These are the LED props. So this is one thing that you can put onto the LEDs to help disperse the light. And boy, does it look a lot nicer. So LED props number one, this is my first generation of props. So I had to order 3000 sets. So my next order, there's going to be the BioDude thumb engraved right here. And once the PVC line is launched, we'll have ones with the drilled hole already set to go with for you guys. So we have the 22 inch BioDude Grow and Glow LED here in the front. I'm going to have this light on with the day with the daytime heat. Uh, if we choose to use do the, the, the daytime heat, 12 hours on, 12 hours off. I'm gonna be regulating the temperature with my BioDu digital thermometer hygrometer. Now this is my new thermometer hygrometer. It has an upgraded probe. So the original manufacturer, they would have consistently have issues with the humidity getting stuck at 99%. We have since fixed that and you put it in great BioDu packaging. As you know, that's what the BioDu does. Okay, so heating. There's a couple different avenues that we can go about doing this. So I told you guys that Heather's gonna be using a ceramic, uh, excuse me, a, a nano heat fixture on one side. It'll most likely be right here, closest to the, the, the top part where we can come out and bask. Another option that you can do is you can use an under tank heater hooked up with a thermostat. What's really nice about the exoteric cages is they have holes in the back to run wires and probes in and out. So it's really easy to have thermostats hooked up. 
Biggest thing with these, with the Exoterra brand and Zoomed brand, you never want to pinch the wire. So if you're putting it at the bottom of the terrarium, you need to make sure the terrarium isn't pinching the wire. I like to put it on the side. So some people will choose to put it on the hot side like this or along the back plugged into the thermostat. And then you can set the thermostat to whatever you want and then you can see how well your tank is regulating. Or you can go with something like a glow light that, X, that I sell on my website that Exoterra offers. For this size terrarium, I'd only go with like a 25 watt, being that it's only about 12 inches tall. And so I have a daylight blue and a moonlight. So a lot of people tell me, well, Josh, don't bulbs mess with their photo period at night? The bulbs that mess with reptiles photo period are the red bulbs. Um, and the extreme purple bulbs. Those will throw off the photo, the photo period of your reptiles if they're not used to them. But normal night light moonlight bulbs that create almost no light, but just enough for your viewing pleasure, they're okay. You just wanna stay away from the red spectrum. Personally with me, if I were the fat tail, I would run this 25 watt moonlight bulb and I would run this all day. Um, I would have this set up to be hooked up to the thermostat and I would have the hot spot be at 95 degrees with a cool side of 68. That's gonna give, the, the, gonna give the little one plenty of opportunity to pick where we wanna go to properly thermoregulate, to properly hydrate, and, and to properly help with shedding. We will be feeding from a dish. Uh, uh, since African, you can feed them loose. African fat tails being that um, they're kind of slower. They can be tendency to miss and grab a bunch of substrate. As long as your reptile isn't immunocompromised in any way and your husband juice right, you don't have any issues with impaction. A animals that die from impaction are immunocompromised animals. So if your animal comes in and it's really, really dehydrated, like a lot of African fat tail geckos do, they're readily imported from Africa t once or twice a year. They, they come in on Strictly Reptiles list for $8.50 a lizard because they are, they're, they're called package stuffers. That's the term. Same thing with a lot of your tree frogs. It's very sad. And people sell these wild caught fat tails for 15, 20, 30 bucks, loaded with parasites, typically really, really dehydrated. That's why it's responsible for you as the keeper before getting them set up in bio that you make sure that we oh, have at least been dewormed once if they are wild caught with metronizadol or Panicure, or they have been soaked um, you know, a couple days to make sure that we're nice and hydrated. And until you know that your animal's fully healthy, you wanna make sure you feed from a dish. Being as somehow, inaccuracy is not the right word, but dubias are a lot easier to catch for fat tails than perhaps a large cricket. The rule of thumb for feeding your fat tail geckos is I always use supplements. So I rotate between the calcium pink and, and the RepCal Herptivite blue. After you open them, you need to keep the supplements in the fridge and they need to be replaced every eight months. The moment you break the seal, they lose their efficacy in eight months. So keep them dark, keep them in the fridge, that's when they'll last. If you keep them on the shelf opened, un unrefrigerated, they almost become inert within a couple weeks. It's very fast. And uh, for, uh, for, adult, uh, for young fat tail geckos, and adult fat tail geckos, the rule of thumb is the space in between their eyes. So you never wanna feed them a food item that is, that is bigger than the space in between their eyes. I have seen captive bred fat tails, very young ones that have come out of the egg. Same thing with baby red eye tree frogs, suffer esophageal tears from the spurs on the sides of cricket's legs that are too big. So as that, might, that could have also potentially been a genetic flaw with the geckos, that's very true. Um, but with red eyes, that is a very, very common problem, and it only makes sense that neonatal reptiles could have that problem as well. So we have a good solid dusting, reg uh, dusting regimen. It, 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 if, you, if you're like me and use a Miss King, I would set off the Miss King to go off for 20 seconds twice a day. If you don't have a Miss King, you want to take another easier approach. We'd, uh, any large mister that you miss you know, once or twice a day right before you turn the lights off, for their proper photo period is, 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 the, is the way to go. So let's take a really good look at the tank here. And is it, and is it awesome? Let me come around here. Doing okay, Joe? Okay. All right, Heather, did you want to introduce your little baby? Okay. So I'm really, let me get my switchblade out of the way here, so sorry. 
She's like, I'm in my little hut. Yep. And I'm really excited to see how we do with this. I'm really looking forward to the updates as well as how well the temperature and the humidity controls in here because I haven't really used any of the tanks that are... Oh, she's like, oh, I don't know about this. I love it. Oh. Hey guys, I, I, I first want to say thank you to Heather for bringing such a, a healthy, beautiful animal here to help me benefit my business and to help, you know, show people how to properly take care of these guys. I want to support, I want to thank all my YouTube supporters, Facebook supporters, and of course all the supporters that come here and really making my business as special, make my business feel as special as it is to me. Again, my name is Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. Check out my website, thebiodude.com. Dude abides.